Saturday, neighbours, you're cordially invited to attend the grand opening of the Outback Fitness Club. Get energised and get healthy. A world of fitness awaits you. And it's free, completely free, for your first visit. Your father and I are going to the fitness club. You want to come along? Me? A vampire? Going to a fitness club? Sorry, Mom, I don't think so. It's a grand opening. That means helium balloons, cotton candy, ice cream, and entertainment. When do we leave? You're going to enjoy getting into shape. No more couch potatoes. Your future is fitness, fitness, fitness. A little time and a little attention to the six hour a day exercise program and you'll look like this. Welcome to the grand opening. Our doors are open for business. Let's go. Oh, I can't wait to get in on this. some cartilage. Hey, mister, where's the helium balloons? This is a grand opening, isn't it? Call me Bruce. And sorry, no helium balloons here, mate. They're not ergonomically correct. The cotton candy tastes funny. Pretty good, eh? It's made out of bean sprouts. Sugar-free. Down under on the farm, it's all we ate. My milkshake tastes, um, strange. That's not a milkshake, it's a tofu shake. Be sure to eat the lumps. <laughs> and in this room we have our mud bath, complete with genuine Australian mud, all the way from Australia. Wow, cool. Neat. Oh, those creatures are nothing compared to the Billabong Bunyip. A Dilladong? A who? A what yip? The Bunyip is a hairy, snaky necked creature with big, oversized kangaroo feet. It creeps out of the Billabongs, the Australian mud pits, to feed on the energy of unsuspecting people. And while it feeds, it makes an evil. Whoa! Sort of like a vampire! Follow me, I'll show you. Here it is. Whoa, cool. Neat. Nice talking to you, mates. I gotta go see my clientele. Even if water does flush backwards in Australia, remind me not to go there where the bunyips are on the loose. going back in that fitness club. Hey, look, it's Principal Shobley. Is he ever walking funny? <coughs> Good, Good afternoon, afternoon Principal Shobley. <coughs> he looks like a sleeping zombie. <coughs> Gee, Fang, Principal Shobley looked awful. But why? He's supposed to be getting healthy. Oh, oh, boy. So sore. Mom, Dad, what's wrong? The fitness club. Six hour workout. No energy. No energy. That's it. Came as fast as we could, but why do we need our gym bags? We're going to get junior memberships at the fitness club. The, the fitness, fitness club? club? <laughs> yep, the bunyips suck in the energy out of whoever goes into the fitness club. Something has to be done. So, the idea is, to eat as unhealthy as possible. 
To keep the bunyip from sucking our energy out of us? If the bunyip attacks us when we're full of unhealthy energy, it'll get sick. So I'm eating the super combo of french fries and gravy with cheese and hot dogs mixed in. And ketchup. I'm not taking any chances. Uh, with bunyips, you can never be too careful. I don't feel so good. That's exactly how you want to feel when you're going to fight a bunyip. Come on. According to my calculations, the bunyip came all the way from Australia, trapped in Bruce's mud, and... playing this didgeridoo. It's a musical instrument from Australia. Listen. Sounds great. Uh, you should think about going professional. Professional, eh? I am actually very good. We have to do something! <gasps> oh. Officer Halcroft! Are you okay? The bunyip got you! <laughs> Come on, we have to stop this bunyip before it attacks its next victim! But how? We'll have to set a trap. Waltzing Matilda! Waltzing Matilda! We'll go a waltzing Matilda! When the bunyip sucks out all Charlie's bad energy from the junk food, it'll get weak and we'll easily be able to beat it. Goodbye, Charlie! <gasps> <laughs> it is a good day. This is the best energy I've ever gotten. Mona, I'm <gasps> getting weak. Uh-oh, miscalculation. Plan A isn't working. The junk food energy seems to be making it stronger. Quick, Lily, plan B. Come on. Yoo-hoo, Bunyip. Here, boy. Come here, Bunyip. <laughs> I don't want to do this. Mona! Help! It's weakening me. Here, Bunyip. Come here, boy. <laughs> Nothing can stop me. Not even you, vampire. After I get your energy, I'll have enough to go all the way back to Australia. No, Bunyip, there's another way. There's only one way. My way. The Bunyip way. You suck the energy out of your own mirror reflection. Help me. Not until you give everyone their energy back. Okay, okay. <laughs> the bunyip's 
given everyone back their energy. Sia was just confused. The bunyip accidentally came from Australia with Bruce. It was homesick. So it just wanted energy to go back to Australia. Back to its billabong. G'day, kids. Just stopped to say goodbye. <laughs> I'm going back to Australia to join a didgeridoo orchestra. You were right, Mona. I should have thought of going professional years ago. Hang on, you forgot something. There, you're ready to go. All right. G'day, then. He was pretty nice for a creature that mercilessly sucked the energy out of people. <laughs> My book report is on Les Miserables, an unfair treatment of the upper class. That's me when being poor was fashionable. Ah! I won't work in these conditions. They're little angels, you'll see. Children, I'd like to introduce your substitute teacher. He's visiting us from far away, and he'll be filling in for Miss Gotto, who's homesick. Greetings, pupils. My name is Zork. <clears throat> I mean to say, Monday. Mr. Monday from Esgobavar. Yes, that is suitable. Oh, oh my wait, wait, no. Stop oh, the oh, oh, oh. Here is your home assignment to be reported tomorrow. The pupils who excel will be selected for uh, awards. Yes, to improve performance. That is good, yes. Where's Esgobavar? Please, the one who is Mona will refrain from speaking during class, yes? How could he hear you? Never mind that. How does he know my name? Listen to this. If Quark A leaves Alpha Centauri traveling at the speed of light, and Quark B leaves Alpha Andromeda, oh, I give up! Maybe it's one of those trick questions. You know, like a pound of lead and a pound of feathers? All the questions are like that. You'd have to be a genius to get this right. Exactly. And what would a grade school substitute want with a genius? Maybe something got lost in the translation from Escobavarian. Do they even use metric over there? I'm gonna fail. St. Faith's first annual achievement awards. That's tonight. Mr. Monday sure works fast. He's putting on a ceremony? I was expecting little star stickers or something. I'm sorry, Mr. Monday. The one who is Lily is mistaken, yes? I am Mr. Tuesday. You knew your name too? How did they do that? Lawrence, what happened to Mr. Rasmussen, the new music teacher? He's homesick. Suddenly came down with the flu. Just like that, huh? That's two sick teachers in two days. I am displeased with performance. Aww. Aww. An F? I've never had anything less than an A. You have all failed the experiment, except for the one who is Angela. She will report to the counselor for the award ceremony, yes? Finally, my genius is recognized. Guess who's been paying someone else to do her homework again? The one who is Mona will do no more speaking. There is much preparation before the harvest. I mean to say, the award ceremony. <gasps> ah! The one who is Mona is troubled? No, I mean, yes. I need to go to the restroom right now, all three of us. What's going on? I went already. We better get back, Mona. We'll get detention. I did not imagine that third eye. If you won't believe me, then maybe Miss Gatto will. Why isn't she home? She's supposed to have the flu. She's probably sleeping. We'd better go. Hey, this looks like one of Mr. Monday's boxes. He was here before us. And I'm sure he wasn't bringing Miss Gatto chicken soup. We better get back. I don't understand. 
Even if there was a conspiracy, what did the substitutes want? I don't know yet, but I'm sure the answer will leap out eventually. <laughs> Bow down, losers. You're looking at the school's top athlete. Top bully is more like it. Says you. The substitute gym teacher and the counselor called me an outstanding specimen. Whatever that means. I'll even get a medal at the awards tonight. Substitute? What did he look like? See for yourself, loser. Hey! They've even replaced the gym teacher and the school counselor. I can barely tell them apart. Something big is going down at the awards ceremony, and we can't let them know that we're on to them. It may be too late. Sorry I'm late. Look what I found in Mr. Monday's desk. What kind of language is that? I don't know, but we're definitely talking different species here. And I swiped their candies, too. They're orangey. Like the vitamin C that my mom gives me. Vitamin C, huh? Really? It, give me one. I think I'm coming down with a cold. Principal Shobley has to believe us now. This is almost too easy. Ah, there you are. Oh, no, I'm disappointed in you. But... I'm afraid this calls for a detention. The one who is Mr. Tuesday and I have consulted Mr. Wednesday and Mr. Thursday. We would like to award the pupils... Awards? ...for outstanding uh, meddling. It is better, yes? Well, uh, the awards are your pet project. Yes, little pets. We do as things are where we come from. It is suitable, yes. Oh, where did the substitutes go? They're probably waiting for the camera crews. I've taken acting courses, you know. This could be my big break. Achoo! Oh, great. Now I've got a cold for sure. Hey, guys, how about we get out of here? And let them get away with it? Get away with what? We don't know what all this means. Exactly, and I intend to find out. I'm just not sure where to start. Hey, listen. There's a weird sound coming from down there. This is as good a place as any. Give my regards to the Drab Four. Wait, me first. Good, leave. There's no room for underachievers here. Do you see anything? It's dark. Hey, stop pushing. No! Ah! This must be the school basement. Listen, it's that humming. Guys? Whoa, a spaceship. The substitutes are extraterrestrials. And by the looks of it, they're getting ready to leave. There's a door here. Maybe it opens from the inside. I don't think it's a good idea to break into an alien spaceship. Let's just leave. The dust is making my cold worse. Achoo! It's not breaking in, if it's already open. Oh, I should have asked for an attention instead. This is all the proof we'll ever need. Look at this stuff. But why are they here? It doesn't make sense. On the contrary, it makes perfect sense now. The award ceremony! They're not handing out trophies. They want to take the kids back to their planet. You mean like collecting stamps? Exactly. A specimen for each category. We have to warn Principal Shobley. We would advise that. We have special seats for the ones who are Mona, Lily, and Charlie. Well, you beat us fair and square. We promise not to resist. Much! <laughs> there is no need for the vacuum cleaner. Housework will come later. You're stirring up dust. Achoo! Your hand before your mouth, please! Is this what you're looking for? Return the immunization at once! There must be a reverse switch on this thing. 
What? Charlie, do your worst. Achoo! 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 never showed up, the award ceremony was cancelled. And that is how I was robbed of my claim to fame. Oh! Well, Bowie! <laughs> when Lily mentioned vitamin C, I realized that the candy was their only defense against the common cold. Charlie did all the work after that. Do you think they'll ever come back? On a planet where every kid is a walking Petri dish? I doubt it. Quiet down! I've had to cut my convalescence short since you little monsters seem to have chased all the substitutes away. Attention, students. The drama club's production of Macbeth in Space has been cancelled due to the disappearance of the prop flying saucer. Thank you. I'm so glad you're back, Miss Gatto. That substitute teacher was simply horrible. I thought he was rather nice. He came to the house to borrow the course outline, and he offered me a ride to my sister's so I could rest for a few days. <laughs> they were space aliens. They were no such thing. The poor fellows were from a far-off country and evidently had a difficult time adjusting to our very different culture. Well, let's pick up from where we left off last week. She really doesn't remember. The aliens must have zapped the teacher's memories. But they always leave evidence behind. It'll turn up when we least expect it. <laughs> <laughs>